1845, Nigeria had its first story building in Badagri, now Lagos State. Now, since then, the built industry has grown tremendously. Now, with this in view, Lagos Chamber of Commerce has organized this event on the built industry, economic impact, sustainability, and future development. The event is holding here at Commerce House, Idowutelo, Victoria Island, Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. Nigeria. I am Gimalo Angel. Hello, okay. The built environment reflects the delicate balance between human creativity and natural world. It is essential that we recalibrate this balance, embrace a future where sustainability, resilience, and inclusivity are central to our approach. Today's seminar provides an opportunity to explore how our businesses can remain competitive and sustainable in the face of daunting challenges. So we have a lot of things, but we are here to find a solution. And the solution will be to advocate for policies that will support infrastructure development, businesses within the, within the built, built environment. We will explore how this sector influences and shapes the future of economies, especially in developing nations like ours. Sustainability of facilities. We're talking about um, green energy and a whole lot. We're talking about what the demand and supply should be. We must take cognizance of the old and as well as the present generations. We believe that um, economic development to a large extent, will depend on the connectivity between sectors. Real estate group, the financial services group, have come together to pull this um, event together. So I want to see value being created when sectors align. It is yet to catch up with uh, sustainability in terms of um, zero carbon emission. All those the SDG goals, implementation in the built sector, having a very good um, urban real estate sector. Nigeria is here to catch up. And the investors, they've started uh, investing in this sector over there. The people want affordable housing. But how affordable is affordable? When we're talking about sustainable housing, we're talking about energy that is green. We're talking about equipment that are green. We're talking about recycling of water. We are talking about non-carcinogenic building materials. In the long run, you don't go to the hospital to spend so much money. The construction industry as a whole um, is at a pivotal point. And right now, it's the economy and global demands, expectations and challenges bring together a collection of uh, forces that impact the industry. Despite the fact that we initiated a thorough, thorough due diligence to give these funds out, most of the real estate owners, most of them are not in the country today. They go to those funds, build one or two houses, and have gone. Till date. So we need to do a thorough audit of what we're doing. It's not about the government. We need government presence. We need government collaboration. But what are we doing in our in house as a practitioner? What are we doing to address our integrity level of assessing this fund? The same fund you are talking about, uh, Doctor, is presently on um, African African housing initiative by Doctor Akinomi. The fund is almost about four about two billion dollars. It's with African Development Bank right now. But who are we going to give this to? They rated Ghana as more credible than us. Government is affordable or housing delivery, you know, structure in this country is completely faulty. And even as professionals in the industry, we have not been able to properly define, you know, what is actually affordable housing, what is social housing. You know, like I said, affordable housing is actually a relative thing. It depends on household income. So what is affordable to you know, uh, people in uh, in the upper level of the of the uh, you know of the income structure will be different from the affordability of the to the 
middle level and then the, the lower level. We have not been able to, you know, bring that out properly. So when we talk about affordable housing, we just talk about affordable housing for general. And that is why you see most of the affordable houses, for instance, that most governments, you know, um, develop and sell, you will find out that majority of it, 80% of it, are actually bought by those who are up there. Now fast track forward to Vision 2020. This was a conscious economic strategy that was planned to improve the sustainability of the developmental goals in order to build a robust economy and become one of the top 20 countries in the world. What a bold ambition. The long-term development plan did not make a dent on the Nigerian developmental challenges as many Nigerians are, were in worse socio-economic conditions than ever before. Nigeria now has the highest number of people living in extreme poverty across the world, with an estimated over 86 needs to move to our own specialized bank. There is doubt now for that for a specialized bank must be set up to mobilize funds and other resources required to finance long-term production of housing and infrastructure. Peter said we need to build 1 million housing every year. To date, governments, federal and states, they hardly do 40,000 housing units every year. So there's a huge gap. How do we ameliorate it? How do we get to our destination? We found out that funding is the critical factor. And right now, the existing financial instruments we have through the commercial bank cannot help us because they are short-term borrowing and a huge interest. We need for development of our infrastructure and housing a specialized bank, like we have Bank of Industry, like we have Agricultural Bank, that will cater for our peculiarities, long-term funds, single digit. My own perspective, given my background as a teacher in university and also in banking, was to look at financing where we focus on affordable housing, all right? So, and the model that I put forward then, which I believe strongly the government is also considering right now, is that for housing to be affordable, uh, you need to change the financing model. Mm. And that means look at the three dimensions to that. There's financing for construction. There is financing also for those that offer mortgage services. And then there's financing for the off-taker, that is the people who actually move into those properties. So the question now is, to make it affordable, we must address it from those three perspectives and then look at the enablers, which is where insurance comes in, all right? So within that context, therefore, the question is number one, how do we get construction companies and players to have access to funding and also such materials that will make the ultimate product affordable. So, and the, the key issue there is that we must look then at number one, the materials used. To what extent can we domesticate the materials? That was number one. Then secondly, can we create a funding model where government comes in and provides, we won't call it subsidy, but provide incentives that will give access to such construction companies and housing delivery firms to access such funds. So in which case, at the input level, is where government intervenes in terms of construction finance. They will now come to the mortgage finance companies. We call them mortgage banks, okay? For them also, you find that the rate at which they lend, the mortgages they create, is also in the double digits. And then, of course, the tenure as well, very short. Of course, they will tell you that it's a reflection of the kind of funds they have access to. So the question now is that, are there possible funds that can be assessed by those mortgage finance banks that will come at single digit, and therefore when they add their own margin, they can also lend at either single digit or the first layer of double digit. That means anything below 15%. So if they have access, therefore, to such funds, 
then it becomes easy for them to also originate mortgages that are affordable. Ultimately, what they deliver to the final consumer will be affordable to them. So when you talk about the value of the property, that's what defines whether it is affordable or not, which means in terms of economy, real estate is more significant okay, in driving growth. So, and that is why each time we analyze the economy, we will say that whatever is happening in real estate is a lead indicator of what will happen to the economy. So in which case, if you get real estate right, the likelihood is that the economy will also benefit. And that means looking at the value chains and what it can put, generate for you. If you put on one single property, look at how many professionals and workers are involved. Okay, those also supply inputs. So it impacts so many other sectors. So that makes it significant to the economy. So anytime it is stable and growing, it always drives economic growth. At least it has the capacity to do that twice than what finance and you know, insurance can do. So it then means that the real estate sector is central to economic growth. If we want this economy to grow in a sustainable manner, as you said, then we need to give a lot of attention to the real estate sector. I think the quality of the conversations that we've had today is, is something that is quite very impressive. And um, I want to thank everyone here for making it possible.